Welcome to Forward with NACI, Inspiring Entrepreneurial Action, a podcast that shares the stories of everyday entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial leaders, and the communities that support us. We hope that this diverse collection of stories brings you inspiration, inspires you to take action, and ignites entrepreneurship in your community as we make our way forward together. Welcome to this episode of Forward with NACI. We're so happy to be joined by a special guest coming to us from Northeastern Ohio, where they're uh, looking at some snow at the time that we're recording this, but lots of sunshine in the studio today. So welcome, Matt Poyle, to the program. We're really happy to have you here. So we're going to jump right in and would love for you to introduce yourself. How did you uh, get connected to us and maybe share an experience of um, what shaped you on the career path that you're on today? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here today. So I am Matt Poyle. I cur my current role is the program coordinator for NEO LaunchNet here at Lorraine County Community College. What we do is we offer free and unlimited business coaching and mentoring to all students, faculty, staff, and alumni. Uh, so we've seen just about everything come through our doors in my past five years in this role, and I no two days are the same, and I truly mean that. Um, how I came into this role was I actually started out as a student at Lorraine County Community College in 2010. Um, the director of the program, Janice Lapina, was actually my advisor um, in, in the businesses that I started while I was a student here. And then I saw there was a part-time position open, and then I moved up to the program coordinator now. So it's amazing that I get to create a lot of the, the programming that I wish would have existed when I was a student. Um, I started my entrepreneurial journey at eight years old with a vending business. I come from a very entrepreneurial family. Uh, so I've always seen things through the eyes of an entrepreneur, and it's great for me to be able to share that. That's great, Matt. And it's funny you mentioned create things that um, didn't exist before. And that, to me, is really the heart of the entrepreneur. But I have to say, too, your college, uh, Lorain County Community College, um, has wonderful leadership. Dr. Ballinger is, is someone that I have sort of followed over the years. I got a chance to speak with her a couple of years ago. And she just has great, very great vision. Uh, same thing with Janice. Um, you know, those are the kinds of leaders and faculty that we have in, in community colleges that make um, things work. So it doesn't surprise me at all that they uh, <laughs> recruited you and got you into this position. And one thing we were talking about a little bit earlier before the broadcast is you were telling me a little bit about this hackathon. And like you said, no two day, days are the same. But for our listeners uh, around the world that may not be familiar with a hackathon, uh, first of all, what is it and, and why do it? And maybe share, uh, share with us a little bit about how that has shaped uh, your work and your success at your college. Perfect. Yeah. So we started our first hackathon three years ago. And our hackathons don't need to be computer based at all. So it, you take an idea that you'd like to hack or something that you'd like to improve. And that could really be anything. So we've done themes or our, our past one is what the world needs now. And that was our 2021 theme. And that could be a local world that could be the world in general, just whatever the world needs. The students created a video around that. Uh, it was three to five minutes long and they sort of thought how they could hack the world, something they could make better. And then the year before we had equity and inclusion hackathon that was actually pitched to our equity by design team so the students got experience pitching to entrepreneurs but then also to college administration as well the idea of the hackathon is you take an idea a theme and you create ideas or businesses around it um, and that's been an, an enriching experience not only for me but for our students um, we created ways for the students to get free food and to listen to music and to connect with one another and just have um, a unifying experience through the hackathons over the past few years. Yeah, I love how you apply that to uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And I think what's really interesting about that is that the work that NACI does around the country is, is in the vein of entrepreneurship. But what we really believe is if you're going to be successful um, as an entrepreneur, as a student in life, you know, you really need to connect with others who have different viewpoints, who have different skills. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about maybe some of the ideas that were hacked in this, um, you know, in that space of focusing on equity, because that would maybe inform 
um, some of the people that are celebrating uh, Black History Month and really want to honor um, and try to advance uh, the cause. So how about that, Matt? Share with us a couple of, of the ideas and, and maybe what happened with that. Okay, so one of the, the statistics I'm the most proud of in my role is that we've worked with students from the age of five all the way up to 78. So they see equity and inclusion differently um, in those different uh, age groups, and we've worked with just about just about everyone. So uh, one of the ideas that was pitched was students were finding that it was difficult for them to find employment um, and at their age groups. So they were able to create what they called the boogie barn was a place for students to get together. It would be student run so they could learn the elements of entrepreneurship as they're creating their own business. But they found that they pitched this idea of creating a place for students to get together and to learn entrepreneurship and to have a place to sort of relax and they, it would have equitable um, employment and be inclusive to all. So that was one idea. And then we had a few ideas that were around equity and inclusion within our community as well. So we had both that were business-based and then things that could be improved within our community. Just a play, like a forum for everyone to be able to pitch their ideas uh, or have an idea for a group, like a Facebook group um, for students to get together and just talk about their ideas around equity and inclusion. Yeah, it's so empowering. And I know one of the things I've been learning, we have a colleague here at NACI, Katie Gales, who uh, just joined us this week as our senior uh, director of membership in DEI and B. And for people that might not be aware of it, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, the ultimate goal is belonging, right? And, and I, I feel like those ideas, you know, that, that you're talking about that were sort of um, you know, pitched and hopefully people are testing them and, and doing some customer discovery is ultimately if we're going to affect change, it really has to be um, people belong. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter how many degrees or how few degrees that they have, but we're going to solve things together. You're really on a path of, of empowerment and, and social entrepreneurship, if you will. Maybe you could talk, Matt, a little bit about how does that impact student success? So you started as a student at your college where you're now uh, a leader in this area. So, so talk to people who may not make the connection about how entrepreneurship, getting involved in like a hackathon or some kind of a club or an activity like this really um, pushes students toward that success line. Okay, so a story that came to mind when you mentioned belonging is we also run lemonade day camps here on campus for students those are a lot of the five to 12 year olds and those students learn about creating their own lemonade stand and they learn entrepreneurship through those programs and one student came to mind we were walking across campus and um, we were i was showing him like hey if you have psychology class it'll be in this building or when you're a student here i always phrase it like when you're a student just getting the students in the mindset of you you can do this and he said i'm not smart enough to go to college um, and we sort of talked about that, like you, you absolutely are. So I think that belonging starts with their mindset. It's not something that, that we can give them. It's just telling them like, yeah, you do, you belong here. It's, you can create your own schedule in college, like things that they might not like about their K through 12 experience, they can adapt in college or they, they belong. And I think that entrepreneurship for me as a student allowed me to have that that sense of belonging where I walked into the Neo LaunchNet office and there was always a place where I could belong. And if I had an off the wall idea, I could bring it in and talk to Janice. And I still do that. I do that this morning. <laughs> um, so that's one thing that hasn't really changed. But I think that entrepreneurship education is a great place to have belonging uh, for yeah. students. Matt, that is, that is so powerful. As you were saying that, I'm gonna encourage Everyone who is listening, if unless you're driving, if you're driving, do not write this down. Um, but that's a powerful thing when you are fill in the blank, you know, because I think it allows people to see themselves and it also allows them to feel seen by you. Uh, because I think if they're a person who maybe they didn't do well in high school, they didn't fit into the traditional, you know, mode, maybe they were the other type of smart. Uh, that they could see that. And, and another thing I want to share with you is a phrase that I use a lot. We talked about it at our staff meeting yesterday is how might we or how might I? And, and that's a sentence that is very powerful because I know even in myself, um, in my own life, when I feel like we all get stuck, right? You get writer's block, you just get stuck. 
if you can empower yourself with words like that, like how might I, how might we together um, move forward? So I wanna thank you for that because I wrote it down on my notebook and I hope other people will use that as well. And I think the other thing is um, kind of you're touching on really the customer experience. And when I deal with colleges all over the country and get the, the opportunity to talk to people like you who have great ideas, um, presidents and chancellors, you know, we're starting to think differently about students like really the student is our customer right and, and and really successful leaders like dr ballinger and others i think they get it you know her background i just know a little bit about her as marketing um and you know we part of belonging is making people want to feel like if i come to your institution if i come to um you know your lab uh, that that i'm welcome there you know i don't i could know absolutely nothing about entrepreneurship but there's a place for me there so i'm excited that you brought sort of those things up um i want to talk to you because we've been having conversations with people about the future um that's really a theme here at nacy is you know is forward, you know, not looking at the past, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm like, can't wait till this pandemic <laughs> is a little bit, you know, safer for everybody so we can kind of not go back to what we were, but be better. So Matt, share with us maybe a couple of things that you're excited about in the future. They could be at your college, they could be in your community or just globally as, as all of us, um, you know, are connected together. Uh, one thing that I am excited about is I'm a part of the Intuit Financial Management for Entrepreneurs program that's offered through NACI. Um, we just opened that up to all of our faculty, staff, students, and alumni yesterday. Uh, we marketed it through our, our newsletter. That's a program that I think is going to be very useful, and it's we're offering that online this semester. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, personally, through my work through Neo LaunchNet, I think that a focus that has shifted throughout the pandemic a little bit more towards self-care for our students. They are our customers, like we like we just talked about. So that's something that I'm very excited about is just, it's not only about the business, but it's about the student that's running the business. And it's about finding that balance that so many of us that are that work-life balance or that work-life family balance or all these different um, things. And I've, one of the students that I worked with over the summer, I said, your best ideas are gonna come to you on the golf course, I promise you. It's not going to come to you while you're in front of the MacBook and you're stressed out. I said, when you're on the golf course, you're going to have a great hole. And then your next, your next great idea, it was a podcast. She, uh, one of our clients runs a podcast. I said, your next episode idea is going to come on that fourth hole. And she's like, sure enough, it, it came to her then. So I think that's the, the importance of balance is something that I'm very, um, very excited about just in general. And um, I'm on, involved in a few boards, and that's one of the themes is a lot of my colleagues that are around my same age, early 30s, are now getting the opportunity to work from home. And they're, they're working remote, and they're able to get dogs, and you see them, they're, they're glowing now. I, I was out at an event yesterday, and they're all just, I, I think that positivity is something that's positivity and um, just balance and self-care. I love that you said that. And I think about you in your early 30s and you know, being sort of older at a little bit later stage of life. I wish I would have learned that in those those years. You know, my children now are, are young adults, you know, they're still, you know, sort of getting in the, you know, education system. But I think about, I, I used to have this mindset that I, you know, it was like, I had to be the first one to jump out of bed. And if I didn't work 10 hours a day and do all these things and and it's taken me a while and Matt, you've learned it definitely before I did but it's funny I, I was at a conference last week and we were having this conversation about the importance of taking naps and we're not children and we're not yeah. we're not senior citizens but one guy uh, and I won't name him uh, but I thought it was a wonderful idea he was telling me about this pod because he said you know all of us are hit with all of this stuff, you know, and sometimes you you can't process it all, or maybe it's all good stuff, but you can't process it all. And so he was telling me about his idea for a pod, like he'd put it in his office and he wouldn't sleep for hours, but he'd go in there for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes and take like a little power nap and then he was ready to go. And it made me smile for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think that's a fantastic idea. <laughs> And secondly, I don't think we would have had that conversation um, pre-pandemic. I, I know that we wouldn't have. So in a way, how we've all been disconnected, I think in a way, the humanity of our shared experience, regardless of where we are in our career path, regardless of, of anything, like we are human beings, we have 
families, we have people that we care about, we care about our fellow staff members. So I, I thank you for sharing that. And I really celebrate you. I congratulate you. Anyone who is listening, um, do us a favor and write down one thing that you're going to do for yourself today that will either be take a deep breath, take a nap, take a walk, look at a beautiful piece of art. And I agree with you, Matt. I Those are my best ideas is when, when you do that. The other thing I want to dive into, and I'm so happy that you brought it up, was Intuit. Um, I just can tell you, you know, from day one, Intuit has just been a fantastic partner of NACI's. Even before I joined NACI as their president and CEO, I worked at a community college in New Jersey as a vice president, and we used QuickBooks as part of our foundation, um, you know, software. And I remember the accountant telling me, well, we can get this for free because we're a nonprofit and we can get all this training. And I remember at the time feeling somewhat skeptical. I was like, well, what, what? And then I learned about the mission of Intuit and there are you know, multiple products. But one of the things, cause I wanna ask you about um, maybe a, a little bit about your experience, but Dave Zazada, who's one of the vice presidents has also been an, an alumni guest of Forward with NACI. So we had a great conversation with him a couple months ago, but really their corporate social responsibility mission is not just to sell stuff and get people to use things, but to really take it to the higher level. So he really believes in values that are aligned with what we believe about co-creation. So perhaps you could tell us a, just a bit about what that experience has been like for you working with other um, people, maybe from other colleges and other communities and learning how to use these resources. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll take it one step further, or one step back, actually, if, if you don't mind. So I'll, I'll go over my experience working with NACI. It's been a pleasure um, the past few years. So just one of the, the highlights of my career was actually presenting with Janice at the NACI 2019 um, uh, conference in Newport Beach, California. And that it was such a, an amazing experience for me. I look back at those pictures all the time because I was just a student walking by an office and then it turned into us going across the country presenting to, to national leaders. And uh, NACI sort of gave us the platform to do that. Well, it didn't sort of, NACI gave us the platform to do that. Um, so I'm thankful for that. And it, it's been an amazing experience so far. And then the next step was working with the Amazon Small Business Academy through NACI, which was an amazing experience too. We went out to Seattle and it was Janice and I again, and um, that was February of 2020, so pre-pandemic, and then we shifted all of our learnings to virtual. And then I wound up teaching the intermediate course through NACI um, again later on in 2020. But as an Amazon seller, that was an amazing experience for me too. I was like a kid in a candy store just looking around and I'm at the headquarters and there's Jeff Bezos' office and it was just such a, a cool experience. Uh, but then working on, on the Intuit program now um, has been another great experience just being able to offer anything for free to our students is unbelievable and being able to have them have access to that resource uh, we posted it yesterday um, starting at february 1st and the we had people signing up immediately um, i had emails coming in right away and it's it's such a, a great resource and we work very closely with our non-credit department here at, at neo launchnet and just being able to post those those courses and put those up. And then if there are students through Neil Launch that they could benefit from the programs as well, we're happy to make that referral and get them in the program for free. But, and it's something that'll help entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs working for themselves or for other people. Just financial management is one of the most important skills that anyone can have. So I'm very thankful to have that opportunity. Well, Matt, you are such a great ambassador. And I remember that conference in Newport Beach, it was our highest attended ever i mean we had people you know just 12 at a table so we could squeeze everyone in and i think about you and the work that you're doing with janice and your colleagues of moving forward through the pandemic and and really kind of thinking about how do you use these experiences to enrich not only your own life but those of of those that you come in contact with so i am really grateful for you and janice and everybody at your college and i just think maybe the takeaway message for people around the world that are listening to this is if you have opportunities, take them. You know, I mean, I remember when NACI, I found out about NACI, I was doing my doctoral research and I was so excited about it because I was like, what is this organization? Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I would one day be running it and have a chance to work with 
wonderful people like Natalia Bereshna, our producer, and yourself and all of my colleagues. So I think a, a state of gratitude also is fuel um, for moving forward and for innovation. So I want to thank you, Matt, for everything that you shared. And I just am uplifted by this conversation. And I hope everyone that is listening is as well. So we'll wish everyone a good day and uh, follow Matt's example and take, <laughs> take advantage of opportunities presented to you and, and do so with a grateful heart. All right, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you will continue to explore the many ways to define entrepreneurship with NACI as we celebrate opportunity, failing forward, and success, learning from one another along the way. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite platform and follow at NACI on social media and learn more about us at NACI.com forward slash podcast. Stay tuned for a new episode each week. We look forward to making our way forward together with you. Have you heard about our latest book, Impact Ed, How Community College Entrepreneurship Creates Equity and Prosperity? This is our roadmap for building back better in 50 states and globally. In each chapter, we share the inspiring stories of everyday entrepreneurs and explain how community colleges play a crucial role in their success. Visit us at nacy.com forward slash impact ed to order your copy now and join us in this work.